Ever wonder why some of the most popular natural supplements suddenly disappear from store shelves? Welcome to the shadowy world of FDA supplement bans, where it's hard to tell if the goal is really to protect us or if something else is going on behind the scenes. For centuries, people have turned to natural remedies to boost their health. But in recent years, some of these time-tested supplements are being labeled as too dangerous for regular sale. But is the FDA really focused on our safety? Or is there a bigger story involving Big Pharma and its efforts to protect its profits? Today, we're diving deep into the controversy surrounding five natural supplements that the FDA has targeted. These include powerful remedies like NAC, an antioxidant often praised for its immune-boosting benefits, and bitter melon, a plant used for centuries to manage diabetes. Both have recently come under fire despite their long history of safe use. It makes you wonder, is this crackdown truly about safety? Or are there other motives at play? Could the pharmaceutical industry be pushing the FDA to eliminate natural competition? Hold on tight, health freedom fighters, because we're about to uncover what might be one of the biggest health cover-ups of our time. First on our list today is a heavy hitter, curcumin, the active ingredient in turmeric. If you've heard of turmeric, you know it's the vibrant yellow spice that's been a staple in Indian cooking for centuries. But beyond its culinary uses, turmeric has been used in traditional medicine for its powerful anti-inflammatory and antioxidant properties. The key to its benefits lies in curcumin, which is what gives turmeric its superpowers. But here's where things get interesting. While turmeric is freely available, the FDA has raised issues with curcumin in supplement form. In 2017, the FDA ruled that curcumin doesn't fit their definition of a dietary ingredient. It's like they're saying that just because curcumin is part of turmeric, it shouldn't be allowed as a supplement. Imagine being told a fruit smoothie isn't considered a drink because it's made of fruits. Doesn't make much sense, right? This ruling has made it harder for people to access curcumin in the quantities needed for medicinal benefits. Sure, you can sprinkle turmeric on your food, but to get the same therapeutic effects that you'd get from curcumin supplements, you'd have to eat around 500 to 1,000 capsules worth of turmeric every day. Unless you plan on turning into a human curry dish, that's just not practical. But why would the FDA target something that could potentially help millions of people, especially those with kidney disease? Research supports curcumin's benefits in this area. A 2020 study involving 700 participants found that curcumin significantly improved kidney health by reducing protein in the urine, a key indicator of kidney damage. It's also known for its anti-inflammatory powers which helps slow the progression of kidney disease. Inflammation is a major player in the development of many chronic illnesses, and curcumin acts like a firefighter, rushing in to put out the flames. But the FDA's position on curcumin is a bit like saying, sorry, we can't let this firefighter help because he's not wearing the right uniform. Instead of focusing on the overwhelming potential benefits, they're getting caught up in technicalities, Yes, the FDA plays an important role in keeping us safe from harmful substances, but in cases like this, it feels like they're overreaching. While it's important to regulate dangerous products, why crack down on something that has been proven to help with inflammation and kidney health, with little to no evidence of danger? So what can you do if curcumin supplements are off the table? Well, one option is to continue adding turmeric to your diet in creative ways. You can try turmeric teas, golden milk, or even mix it into smoothies and soups. While it's true that eating turmeric doesn't give you the same concentration of curcumin as a supplement, it still provides some benefits. However, this doesn't change the fact that for those who could really benefit from higher doses, the FDA's stance is a barrier to accessing something that could improve their health. This raises bigger questions. Why is the FDA so quick to restrict natural substances 
that have a long track record of safety? And could there be other forces at play, like the pharmaceutical industry, which stands to profit from more expensive drugs that do what natural supplements can often do at a fraction of the cost? There's a lot to think about here, but one thing is clear. Health freedom is about having access to all the tools we need to take care of ourselves, whether that's a prescription drug or a centuries-old natural remedy. Stay informed, ask questions, and never stop exploring the truth behind these decisions. Because when it comes to your health, you deserve the whole story. Next on our list is barberry. You might think of barberry as just a shrub that grows in your yard, but it's so much more than that. Barberry, also known as Berberis vulgaris, has been a cornerstone of traditional medicine for centuries. The real star here is berberine, the active compound in barberry that packs a powerful punch when it comes to boosting health. But despite its long history of use, barberry has found itself on the National Kidney Foundation's NKF do not use list, raising eyebrows for many natural health advocates. You're probably wondering, why would they ban something that grows right in people's backyards? Great question. The NKF, like other major health organizations, tends to be extremely cautious when it comes to herbs and supplements. Many herbs are put on the no list, not because they've been proven harmful, but because there haven't been enough large-scale human trials to give the seal of approval. This ultra-careful stance is exactly what happened with Barbary. They claim it could interact with medications or cause problems, but they may be overlooking its potential benefits. In fact, studies suggest Barbary might actually be good for kidney health. A 2021 study discovered that berberine improved kidney function in rats with diabetic kidney disease. And if that wasn't enough, a 2022 meta-analysis involving 1,500 people found that berberine helped lower creatinine levels and improved kidney function in humans. For those unfamiliar, creatinine is a key marker used to measure kidney health, so these findings are significant. Despite this promising research, the NKF has decided to slap a big do not use label on it, citing a lack of complete understanding of its risks. It feels a bit like they're saying, we know this could help, but because we don't have every tiny detail, we don't want you using it. While it's always smart to be cautious with anything you put in your body, isn't it worth considering an option that has the potential to help? especially when the risks aren't fully proven? So what's the bottom line with Barberry? If this has piqued your interest, try looking for ways to incorporate small amounts of Barberry in your diet or talk to your healthcare provider about its potential benefits. And remember, knowledge is power. If you know someone who might benefit from learning about this, share this info with them to help spread the word about Barberry's potential. Now. Let's move on to another banned supplement, bitter melon. This strange-looking vegetable resembles a bumpy cucumber and has been a go-to remedy in Asian medicine for hundreds of years. But when it comes to kidney health, the NKF isn't a fan. Bitter melon has been blacklisted because of concerns that it could lower blood sugar too much. If someone is already on medication for diabetes, there's a worry that adding bitter melon could cause blood sugar to drop to dangerously low levels. But here's the thing. Multiple studies have shown that bitter melon can be a highly effective natural treatment for lowering blood sugar, particularly in people with type 2 diabetes. A study published in 2021 even found that bitter melon improved kidney function in rats with kidney damage. So, not only does it show promise in managing blood sugar levels, but it could also help protect your kidneys from damage, a huge win for people dealing with both diabetes and kidney concerns. Despite these promising findings, the NKF has chosen to take the ultra-conservative route by adding bitter melon to their no list. It's as if they're saying, we know this might work, but we'd rather play it safe than take any chances. While we always want to avoid potential risks, why shouldn't people have the option to use something natural 
like bitter melon, to help manage both their blood sugar and kidney health? Especially when studies suggest it could make a real difference. So, the question remains. Are you going to let a health organization decide what you can and can't eat, or will you take control of your health journey? If all this talk about bitter melon has got you fired up, share this information with others who might want to explore natural options for managing their health. You never know who could benefit from learning about these alternatives. Stay tuned, because up next, we're diving into another supplement that's raising eyebrows in the world of kidney health. Let's dive into the science. A 2021 study published in the Journal of Natural Products took a close look at barberry, specifically focusing on its active compound, berberine. The study showed that berberine improved kidney function in rats with diabetic nephropathy, a condition where the kidneys are damaged due to diabetes. This finding is important because diabetic kidney disease is a growing concern worldwide and discovering something that could potentially help is significant. Not only did berberine show promise in this animal model, but further research could help translate these benefits to human treatments. On top of that, a 2022 meta-analysis published in the International Journal of Endocrinology reviewed 18 randomized controlled trials involving over 1,500 people. This meta-analysis found that berberine significantly lowered serum creatinine levels and improved glomerular filtration rate, GFR, both key indicators of kidney health. To put it simply, berberine helped kidneys function better. For people with kidney issues, especially those related to diabetes, these findings suggest that berberine could be an effective natural tool for improving kidney function. But despite these promising results, the National Kidney Foundation, NKF, still says no to barberry. It's like they're telling us, yes, it might help, but we can't let you use it because we're not 100% sure it's completely safe yet. While caution is understandable, it feels like they might be shutting the door on a potentially beneficial treatment before fully understanding all of its advantages. The NKF has a critical role in protecting people from risks, but in this case, it seems they're being overly cautious, likely because large-scale human studies haven't been conducted yet. So, what should you do if you're interested in Barbary? While the NKF may not recommend it, it's always a good idea to consult your healthcare provider. They can help you weigh the pros and cons, especially if you have kidney-related health concerns. Just remember, when it comes to supplements or herbs, getting professional advice is crucial before making changes to your health routine. Now, let's talk about bitter melon, the third supplement on our list. If you haven't seen one before, imagine a bumpy cucumber with a strong bite. That's bitter melon. This vegetable has been used in traditional Asian medicine for centuries, particularly for its ability to lower blood sugar. But the NKF isn't a fan of bitter melon either. They've added it to their list of herbs to avoid because they're worried it could lower blood sugar levels too much, especially for people who are already taking medication for diabetes. This concern isn't without merit. If you're already taking medication to control blood sugar, adding bitter melon could drop your sugar levels too low, which is a real danger. But here's what's interesting. Numerous studies have shown how effective bitter melon can be, not just for blood sugar control, but for kidney health as well. For example, a 2022 study in the Review of Diabetic Studies found that bitter melon significantly reduced blood sugar levels in people with type 2 diabetes. On top of that, another study from 2021, published in the Journal of Traditional and Complementary Medicine, discovered that bitter melon improved kidney function in rats with kidney damage. So not only is it effective in helping control diabetes, but it could also help protect the kidneys, a win-win for people with both conditions. So, why the ban? The NKF prefers to play it safe, which is understandable given their mission to protect people from potential risks. 
but it's also possible that by being overly cautious, they might be dismissing natural remedies that could be of real benefit to people. If this information about bitter melon has you intrigued, share it with friends and family who may benefit from learning about these natural health options. After all, we should all have access to the information we need to make informed decisions about our health. But here's where it gets really interesting. A 2021 study published in the Journal of Natural Products found that berberine, the key compound in barberry, actually helped improve kidney function in rats with diabetic nephropathy, which is just a scientific way of saying it helped diabetic kidneys work better. If you're not convinced by rat studies, I get it. Animal studies don't always translate directly to humans. So let's move on to the human trials. A 2022 meta-analysis published in the International Journal of Endocrinology reviewed 18 randomized controlled trials with over 1,500 participants. This analysis found that berberine significantly reduced serum creatinine levels and increased estimated glomerular filtration rate, EGFR, both of which are crucial markers for kidney health. In simple terms, berberine made the kidneys work better. This is big news for people dealing with kidney issues, especially those related to diabetes, which is one of the leading causes of kidney disease. So, why the ban on barberry? Well, the National Kidney Foundation, NKF, points to possible interactions with medications and the lack of large-scale human studies focused specifically on kidney disease. It's almost like they're saying, we know this fire extinguisher works on other fires, but we haven't tested it on your specific fire, so you can't use it. Now, to be clear, I'm not suggesting we completely dismiss the NKF, they play an important role in keeping people safe. But in this case, it seems they might be overly cautious. They're focusing so much on potential risks that they could be missing out on the benefits. If this information about Barberry has got you thinking, be sure to hit that like button and share it with your friends and family. They might appreciate knowing about this natural option, especially if they're dealing with kidney health issues. All right, now it's time to move on to number three on our list, bitter melon. And wow, has the National Kidney Foundation thrown a fit over this one. Picture this, a bumpy cucumber with a serious attitude. That's bitter melon. It's been a staple in traditional Asian medicine for centuries, praised for its ability to lower blood sugar. But the NKF? They've slapped a big no sticker on it faster than you can say dialysis. Are they really protecting us, or is there something else going on? Let's take a closer look. The NKF claims that bitter melon could lower blood sugar too much. Their concern is that if someone is already taking medication for diabetes, adding bitter melon could lead to dangerously low blood sugar levels. Sounds serious, right? But here's where things get a little murky. Bitter melon has shown in several studies to be highly effective not only for controlling blood sugar, but also for kidney health. For example, a 2022 study published in the Review of Diabetic Studies found that bitter melon reduced blood sugar levels in people with type 2 diabetes. And in 2021, another study from the Journal of Traditional and Complementary Medicine found that bitter melon improved kidney function in rats with kidney damage. So here, we have a natural remedy that could help manage blood sugar and protect kidneys. Yet, the NKF has decided to ban it. It feels a bit like the NKF is saying, we know this might work, but we're not willing to take the chance. And that's where the frustration comes in. Sure, we need to be cautious, especially when it comes to health, but if something natural like bitter melon can help people manage their blood sugar and improve kidney function, shouldn't it at least be considered as an option? So, let's break it down. While the NKF is looking out for potential risks, there's a growing body of evidence suggesting that bitter melon can be a powerful tool in fighting both diabetes and kidney disease. If you're intrigued by this, 
make sure to share this information with others who might benefit from natural health options. Stick around because we've got even more to uncover in the world of banned supplements that could be game changers for kidney health. It's like they're saying, we can't have you getting too healthy now, can we? But let's see what the science has to say. A 2022 study published in the Review of Diabetic Studies found that bitter melons significantly reduced blood sugar levels in people with type 2 diabetes. And here's the kicker. A 2021 study in the Journal of Traditional and Complementary Medicine showed that bitter melon improved kidney function in rats with kidney damage. So not only does it help manage diabetes, but it also supports kidney health. It's almost like Mother Nature knows exactly what she's doing. So, why is the National Kidney Foundation, NKF, throwing bitter melon under the bus? Are they really looking out for us? Or are they just repeating what their pharmaceutical friends tell them? It's like they're saying, sure, bitter melon might help your kidneys and diabetes, but since we can't make money off it, we're going to ban it. Now, I'm not directly accusing the NKF of being in Big Pharma's pocket, but let's be real. If it looks like a duck, swims like a duck, and quacks like a duck, well, you get the picture. So, What's a smart kidney warrior like you supposed to do? Are you going to let some organization with a fancy acronym tell you what you can and can't eat? Or are you going to take charge of your own health? If this truth about bitter melon has you fired up, hit that like button and share this video with your friends. Let's spread the word. And stick around for the next video, where we'll expose number two on our list of banned supplements. All right, truth seekers, it's time to pull back the curtain on number two, vitamin E. That's right, the NKF advises you to avoid good old vitamin E. But why? What are they hiding? Let's connect the dots. Vitamin E is an antioxidant powerhouse that's been around for years, but it's also been a thorn in Big Pharma's side. Why? Because it's cheap, it's effective, and most frustrating of all for them, it's natural. And as we know, you can't patent Mother Nature. The NKF claims vitamin E might increase the risk of bleeding for some people. How convenient, right? It almost sounds like they're following Big Pharma's script word for word. But here's what they're not telling you. A groundbreaking 2023 study in the Journal of Renal Nutrition found that vitamin E supplementation significantly reduced oxidative stress in patients with chronic kidney disease. In other words, vitamin E acts like a protective shield for your kidneys. And it gets even better. A 2022 meta-analysis published in Nephrology Dialysis Transplantation showed that vitamin E could actually slow the progression of kidney disease in diabetic patients. Think about that. A simple, natural vitamin doing what billion-dollar medications can't. So why is the NKF so determined to keep vitamin E out of your hands? Follow the money. Big Pharma can't make the same profits from vitamins as they do from expensive, patented drugs. They want to keep you reliant on their costly treatments. If vitamin E helps manage kidney disease, what happens to all those dialysis centers? What happens to all those pricey medications? The whole system comes crashing down. So, the question is, are you going to let Big Pharma and the NKF control what you put into your body? Or are you going to take your health into your own hands? If this information about vitamin E has you thinking, make sure to share this video. The fight for health freedom isn't over yet.